Hi, I'm Gary Duncan with Duncan Imports and Classic Cars in Christiansburg, Virginia. Uh, we have approximately 1,500 cars between Virginia and our place in Nashville, and also coming from Japan. Uh, we've imported about 4,000 cars into the U.S. since 2016. I want to spend a little time today to show you my collection and show you some of the things that we do. We've got some pretty unique vehicles, anywhere from Japanese, German, um, American, just a little of everything. Um, you won't see quite as many exotics. We just kind of got cars that people afford that we enjoy and we kind of grew up with. I've been an automobile dealer for 49 years. I got my first franchise when I was 19. I tell everybody I have a PhD. Papa had a dealership and I uh, just love the car business and always have and uh, this kind of takes it to a new level. This is one of uh, our favorites in the collection. It belonged to Barry Goldwater. He owned it for 20 years and campaigned uh, out of it. So it, it's kind of unique. It uh, originally came from uh, California. It's a 49 Mercury Woody. Here's two of my favorites in the collection. Uh, two auto unions. This is a 61 Auto Union 1000. Uh, these cars were predecessors to, well, they were DKWs, and as you can see, the Audi emblems. I'm also an Audi dealer too, so I saw these cars for the first time in Germany, and as soon as I was able to find them at an auction or somewhere, I tried to buy one of each. This is the 1000. This one looks like a 57 Thunderbird. This is a 60 model. Uh, it's an all 1000, S 1000 SP, pretty unique little car. Uh, this is what we call our Figaro room. The Figaro was built in uh, 1990. They only made 20,000 of them. You had to get on a lottery to buy one of them. I saw them the first time at, on a Honda trip at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1989, and I've had to wait 25 years to bring them in. Uh, they're a four-cylinder turbo, they're a little convertible, and I knew when I saw them in 1989 that they were gonna be a hit, but I had to wait 25 years to bring them in. We've also um, rented four of them to uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. We sent them to Omaha, Nebraska for a video shoot they wanted to do. And here's the picture with the guys in the Figaro's. One of the reasons we had to make wait 25 years is thanks to our government, these uh, vehicles have to be 25 years old to be able to bring in to pass emissions and DOT to bring them into the U.S. legally. And 25 years classifies them as a classic. We've brought in about 10 Japanese hearses from Japan. Uh, we sold one to a uh, gentleman that owned a chain of funeral homes in California. Really ornate and detailed, as you can see from the gold and the copper and the carvings of the dragons. They're just really cool and unique that the, the way and the craftsmanship that they've done for these. This was a four-door Toyota Century that they put this uh, conversion on in Japan. Uh, this is part of my low mileage VW collection. This is a 98 VW. If you remember, the body style changed in 1998. This is the first car that was shipped to the U.S. and the story is in the window along with the window sticker. It has 115 miles. Now, if that's too many miles, I've got a 78 Champagne VW convertible here with uh, 83 miles. And if that's too many miles, I've got a 77 Super Beetle with the window sticker in it. And it has 33 miles. Uh, also, I have a 74 Carmen Ghia that has 25 miles. Just part of the VW, approximately 
25 VWs I have in the collection with uh, bugs and buses and pickups. This is also a room where I keep the majority of my Toyotas, Acuras, Hondas, anything Japanese. Um, collecting cars is kind of generational and this is what I see coming. I try to buy as many low mileage, unmolested Japanese cars as I can. Uh, as we grow older, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60 model cars are starting to go away in that crowd, but the 70s, 80s Japanese cars are just really going up in value, and we just think it's one of the greatest things. Of course, that's what I grew up with, and being a Honda dealer for 44 years, and a Mazda dealer, it's, uh, it's really been part of my life. Um, this is another one of my favorites in the collection. It's a rare yellow 97 uh, Acura NSX with 27,000 miles. Certainly all original and unmodified. This is a car that's special to me. It's a extremely low mileage Ford Pinto. My dad uh, became a Ford dealer in Blacksburg, Virginia in 1966. I used to wash these cars in the wash pit. In fact, I used to wear shorts that looked like the interior of these seats. This is gonna be one we'll talk about. This is a very rare uh, Renault. It's called an Alpine. Uh, they were never imported to the US, but it's a fiberglass body V6 turbo. It's very unique, and you really don't see many of them in this country and it's an affordable car. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. It's a 1980 AMC Pacer with 18, 1,884 miles, all original. Uh, it's part of my AMC collection, and uh, it's just probably one of the lowest mileage AMC Pacers in the world. This is a 1992 uh, Mazda AutoZam. Uh, they only made 4,000 of them. Uh, they came standard with gold wing doors. They're a very lightweight vehicle and they only made them a very few years. They also, a knockoff of this car was a Suzuki Kara and they only made 400 of those. This is a 1937 Datsun. Uh, I bought this vehicle while I was in Japan in 2017 from the G-Line Museum in o Osaka, Japan. Uh, I didn't really realize that Datsuns were made that far back to the 30s, but boy, was I wrong. Uh, this is a, a 1983 Mitsubishi Jeep. As most of you know, uh, Chrysler had a deal with Mitsubishi and Mitsubishi had a deal with Chrysler. And this was kind of a knockoff from the Jeep, except it has a Mitsubishi running gear and drivetrain. This is a 1969 Subaru 360. When Subaru came to this country, uh, this was the very first model that they brought in. And uh, as you can tell with a lot of the Japanese cars, they were very small and these cars are really going up in value and they're really rare if you can find a nice one. Thank you everybody for watching. Be sure and hit the like button and subscribe.